Hi everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are exploring two essential Power BI file types. First, .pbix file type, that is the Power BI desktop file. And the second, .pbit, that is the Power BI template file. We will answer key questions like What are they? How are they different? And more importantly, when should you use each one? We will also talk about a powerful feature that makes dashboard sharing easier, the folder path parameter, and show you how to use it to create a scalable Power BI template. So, let's start with the basics. The Power BI desktop files is the regular working file in Power BI. It contains everything. Your visuals. Your data model. Power query transformations. And the actual loaded data. On the other hand, Power BI template contains the same structure, all visuals, formatting, and queries, but no data. When someone opens a template file, Power BI prompts them. Where's your data? That makes it perfect for reusable dashboards. Let's break it down visually. How are they different? Power BI desktop files include your data. Power BI template files don't. They are like a clean slate waiting for input. Both file types include all your visuals, charts, cards, slices, so there's no loss in layout or design. Again, both contain your Power Query steps. But with template, those queries will only be executed once the user provides their own data source. Because Power BI Desktop file stores actual data, the file size is larger and the template is much lighter it's just the shell. This is key. Power BI Desktop Files just opens and loads your saved data, whereas, template file prompts the user to load their own, perfect for reuse across teams or clients. So, use .pbix for working reports, day-to-day -day editing, or publishing with your own data. And use .pbit when you want others to reuse your layout, but with their own datasets. In short, when should you use each one? Use .pbix when you're building or sharing a complete report with actual data. And use .pbit when you want to create a reusable dashboard structure, such as for different regions or departments, for new clients, or for training dashboards. It's also a great way to avoid sharing confidential or large datasets. Now some of you might wonder, why not just delete the data from input sheets of .pbix file and send that? Sounds simple, right? Let's break that down. If you want to share .pbix without data, you'd need to manually clear the Excel files or remove the loaded data tables from the model. Then the receiver has to reconnect to the data sources and update every query individually. This might be manageable with one file. But, imagine your report connects to 6, 10, or even 15 different Excel files stored in a folder. To share that .pbix, you'd have to open every file and wipe the data. Or remove queries and risk breaking your visuals. Then, the person receiving it would need to open Power Query, go into each query, and update the file path manually for every single data source. That's not only tedious, it's prone to human error. So, here is the better solution. When you export your file as a .pbit, you can add a folder path parameter. And your queries reference this parameter instead of hard-coded paths. So when someone opens the template, Power BI will prompt them to enter a folder path automatically connect to all files inside that folder. One input, one step, and all files connected. Now let's jump to the demo where we will see this step by step. For this demonstration, we will use this HR Analytics dashboard. Here, we have multiple screens, all linked to different input sheets. This dashboard includes six different Excel files. All of them are stored inside one folder, that is, input data folder, which you can see here. This is the folder path we'll be working with. 
So, let's start with the first step. Open Power BI and click on Transform Data. This opens the Power Query Editor. To check the data source, you can either click on Source under the applied steps in each query, or open the Advanced Editor. Here, you'll see the full folder path followed by the file name. As you can see, all the files follow the same folder path. Before moving to the next step, copy this folder path, we'll use it when creating our parameter. The second step is to create a folder path parameter. To do that, click on Manage Parameters. This opens a prompt window. Click New to add the parameter, and in the Name field, let's enter Base Folder Path, which will be the name of the parameter. Description is optional, we'll leave it blank. For type, select text, since we'll use this path as a text string to concatenate with the file names. Keep suggested values set to any value. In current value, paste the folder path we copied and make sure to add a backslash at the end. Click OK and you'll now see the new parameter added with the current value set to folder path. In step 3, we will apply this parameter to every query. To do that, go to the advanced editor of each file's query. Look for the hard-coded folder path in the file.contents function. Replace just the folder path with the parameter we created. So, simply from source step, delete this path. And before double inverted comma, just start typing base folder path, and it will appear in the suggestions. Use and symbol to concatenate the folder path with the file name. Now, to save time, copy this format and apply it to all other queries, and we will replicate the same for other queries one by one. This step makes every data connection relative to a single folder path, no matter how many files you're using. You can see the source of the file is now linked with the base folder path. This step makes every data connection relative to a single folder path, no matter how many files you're using. Now in step 4, we will clean the file before exporting. Simply go to File, Options and Settings, then Options. Under the Current File section, go to Data Load. Uncheck Auto Date Time. This prevents Power BI from creating unnecessary hidden date tables and helps keep your .pbit file lightweight. Click OK. Now we are ready to move to step 5, export as .pbit template. Let's close and load the queries and wait for loading. Go to File, then Export and select Power BI template. You'll be prompted to enter a description. Add one if needed, as you can see, I've added mine here. Click OK, choose the location, and save the file with an appropriate name. We have now successfully exported your report as a .pbit template. Now, the last step, test out template. In the folder, locate the .pbit file we exported. As you can see, the template file is significantly smaller in size compared to the .pbix file. Let's open it. Once it is open, it will first prompt for base folder selection. In this, you will first see the file name, then the description we provided during export. And last, 
it is asking for the value of the base folder path parameter. Copy the folder path where your input files are stored. In my case, it is the same as before, but if someone else is using this template, they can enter their own folder path, depending on where they've saved the files. Paste the path and make sure it ends with a backslash, then click load. Power BI will now connect to all six Excel files automatically, load all the queries, and render all visuals exactly as designed without editing a single query. For the regular use, you can click save and store the report as a .pbix file. And that's it. Now you know not just how to export .pbix to .pbit, but how to make your dashboard scalable using Power BI parameters. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Power BI tips and project-based learning videos.